Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I wanna begin on our Fireball Tools Hardtail Vice project here. What you see in front of you is we have all of the castings for a hardtail vice. This is the Made in USA version. Right here, we also have a disassembled hardtail vice. Jason over at Fireball offers these in two versions. Right now, you can buy this version right here of the hardtail vise. This is the one that is imported, that is manufactured in Taiwan. Uh, it is an extremely high quality, heavy duty, strong, rigid vise that you can purchase and uh, put to work. Uh, he had all of the intentions and is still working on the, uh, the manufacturing of the Made in USA version of his hardtail vise. There's been a lot of delays and setbacks in uh, all of the processes involved in being able to get a vise like this manufactured in the U.S. But he is working on that, and I want to say that probably in 2024, he is going to have the Made in USA version or some of them ready to start uh, sending to customers that are uh, looking to purchase this. There is a price difference here between the two, but you can certainly get on uh, the Fireball Tools website and check that out. I also would like to mention that uh, Jason has a really nice playlist over on his YouTube channel of all of the torture testing that he has done to his vice here in comparison to other vices out there like the Wilton and the Reed vices and several other manufacturers out there. And I think that he really, really does prove and show in those videos how strong of a vice that he has uh, built here. So uh, I feel confident that no matter who owns this vice, you're gonna have a very high quality, heavy duty vice that should rescue you the rest of your life there. But whenever uh, we were discussing the purchase of the Fireball Tools hardtail for the uh, shop right here, he offered to send me the castings for his Made in USA version vice right here. Uh, you know, Jason and I have collaborated in the past on some projects and I, I just can't thank him enough for wanting to uh, work with me on such a project like this. So I'm gonna get started on machining these. I think it's gonna be a really fun project, a great project for the channel here. And my idea is that I would like to implement many of my machines, tools, and processes to manufacture, not manufacture, but machine this guy into a complete advice to, that we can build and assemble and put together and uh, put to work here. I am gonna start with the main casting right here, the main jaw body, which is this, this part that you see right there. We're gonna begin with this, and what I'm gonna be doing in this video, by the way, this is gonna be a multi-part series project that we're gonna be doing, okay? I don't know how many videos that we're gonna have at this point, but I know that there's gonna be several because we have this guy to machine, we have the swivel base to machine. I would actually like to machine one of these guys there that goes with the swivel base. We have this piece that goes on the end of the vise here we've got to machine. This right here is your dynamic jaw. I've got it pulled out because I was looking at it, measuring it, and, start, and starting to compare things. And then we have the, the raw casting here next to it that we got a machine. And I can see multiple machines being used for this, uh, both manual and some CNC stuff there probably as well. So I'm not sure at this point exactly what all we're gonna be doing, but we'll jump into that as soon as we start moving on to uh, each and every project. For example, this guy right here, I may want to take this to the home shop and uh, machine some of this using our shaper. I know you guys have uh, missed some of that content for, it's been a little while since I've made shaper content. And I think machining this part right here would probably be great and uh, some fun content to share with you. But back to what I was saying, I want to begin with the main jaw here, the main body of the vise. And we got to start somewhere, right? We got to get something machined so that we have a reference to work off of. And my plan is to start with the base. Let's see if I can get this flipped up. This is pretty stout. I would like to begin with the base of the main body here. Get this guy machined flat, get our holes put in there. And then once we get this machine right there, we're also gonna have to uh, move on to the, uh, the back side, which is gonna be this area right here that this part bolts onto. So that's gotta be machined. We got some holes drill and tap in that. And then we can move on to this part of the jaw. That's gotta be machined for our jaws that's gonna bolt onto and then, um, and then move on from there. So once we get all the outside of that machine, we're gonna have to move on to the inside 
of this part of the, the casting. And I think that is where we're gonna make use of our genie shaper to get in here and cut the internal rectangular shape that we're gonna need for the dynamic jaw to uh, slide through. And I do know that this right here, this process of getting this rectangular shape accurately machined in there was one of the big holdups for the Made in USA Vice. And just recently, uh, before filming this video, I saw Jason post a couple videos on his Instagram of that brooch that he had to, he had to build that. I believe he had someone manufacture that and it, and it was not cheap to, to have a big gigantic brooch manufactured to be able to cut this out. But we're not gonna be broaching it. We're gonna be using the shaper to cut this internal rectangular shape. So that's probably gonna be coming up in you know, a, a separate video. We're not gonna be able to get all this into one, but I do look forward to getting this set up on the shaper and making use of our G&E to be able to come in there and cut this internal shape. If you guys didn't have a shaper, what would you use to cut this? You know, you gotta really think about that. If you had a, maybe if you had a big slaughter, you could do that. Um, but a shaper machine is definitely the tool that you need if you're gonna build one of these one off, not necessarily for, uh, for production, but if you're wanting to do something like this on your own one or two or small batch of parts, it's gonna be the way to go. So I think that's gonna be it. Let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna be using our KBC mill to kick things off and we'll get this guy set up over there and I'll show you the process that I'm gonna use along the way and we'll start getting this main body machine, okay? All right, so my plan of attack for beginning the machining of the, the main body right here is we're gonna be clamping it in a mill vise, just like you see right here, over there on the KBC mill. And since there's enough area right here, we should be able to clamp this in the mill vise, let this hang over towards the, the mill table. And what we'll do is we'll set up a machinist jack over here on this side and a toe clamp to support this in. Now there's no machine reference points on here, so we gotta start with something, right? But we know that this surface here, the mounting surface, and this back surface right here should be perfectly perpendicular to each other. And with this being cast the way it is, it looks, it looks nice and straight. So I'm planning on using this surface right here as our reference point that we're gonna square everything up to to begin with. And once this is machined, we'll be able to bolt it to this face to do all of the other machining for this face and on the jaw face there as well. All right. I did want to point out that Jason did provide a few prints for me. These are basic prints that have uh, basic dimensions that I need to know for the machining. And I appreciate him doing this because this kind of allowed me to be able to just simply look at a print like that and not have to completely disassemble the other vise there to get measurements. And if he didn't provide that, that's what I would have been doing, but this is gonna make my job a whole lot easier having actual dimensions that he has already developed for this vise. All right, so let's get it over there to the mill. All right, we got a six inch mill vise. I've got my eight inch MMM USA jaws mounted in there so that it provides a little bit taller area there that we're gonna be able to clamp to. We do have that surface right underneath here that's like the uh, what you would consider the anvil of a vise. And what we'll do is we'll set this right down on the, uh, the, the bed of the, the vise. Just get it in there close and then we'll get it moved around as we need to. Something about like that right there. Let's just hold it in place and see what I got going. So you can see that we've got just over half of our jaw there contacting this part of the body and I think that's gonna be good. I'm also gonna be putting some emery paper in there too as well. It's another trick that I use whenever we're holding castings that I've shown before and we'll, we'll show you that. But I wanted to point this out. So I've got a machinist square there. This is a six inch machinist square and I'm gonna be squaring up this surface right here to begin with using the, the square just like you see right there. 
we're, we're definitely not square yet, but we need to finish getting it set up and getting it held in place so that we can adjust this thing around and then get this um, surface right there lined up with the machinist square. All right, we got a couple of blocks right here that we're gonna use for our stack up underneath the, the chin. Like that. And we're gonna use this machinist jack to, to um, support this side of the, the vice body. By the way, this is uh, the new machinist jack that's offered by Edge Technology Products. I'm just gonna put it under there like so. And then I've got a T-nut and a couple of studs here. This V-block that we'll use to support the back of the toe clamp. All right, we're gonna use this toe clamp right there, but we need to come on up a little bit higher. So we're gonna use a, uh, a one, two, three block here. We've got our right height toe clamp there. That'll work pretty good. Now this is a slightly curved surface where we're contacting. So instead of going metal on metal there, what I'll use is I've got one of these copper soft jaw pads that I use on the lathe. And we'll put that underneath this part of the toe clamp and that will provide a couple of things there. It's copper, so it's gonna have a little more grip than just the metal on metal, and since the copper's soft, it'll kind of push down and conform to the casting surface there. All right, we've got a washer there and a flange nut, and we are gonna put a, we've got a little brass block that we'll put underneath the rear part of the toe clamp here. So we're not pushing directly onto this one, two, three block. All right, that should be pretty good. I've got the stud is about as close to the casting body as we can without running into it. And I think that's gonna work right about there. All right, I'm making a change to the, where we're gonna be putting the machinist jack. So I did have this initially up underneath there, but the problem that, it, that that's posing is that I'm not really gonna be able to adjust that if I need to. So I'm gonna move it out to this outer surface and I've actually got more than one of these new jacks here. So we've got a second one there that we can put right next to it. And then we can have two jacks here that we can support these two surfaces of the chin there. Just like that. I think that's gonna, that looks good. Actually shift that just a little bit. Yeah, you try to make everything look nice and square and even, right? So we'll line it all up. Run those up, and I got a hole through there so we can stick a little rod, or a, you can use some kind of pin or anything to, uh, to to turn these and adjust them. Okay, I've got two pieces of 150 grit. You can pretty much use whatever you got. This is something that I already have here, so I've got them torn off so that they're about the width of what we're gonna be catching there. This is a really good old school trick that I learned in one of my really old machinist uh, books. Uh, whenever, especially whenever I'm doing things on the shaper. You have raw castings there that have that imperfect surface. This emery paper or sandpaper really helps to kind of grip that. I've got the toe clamp just finger tight, so I should be able to loosen this up just enough. And we can slide this down in there like so. Just kind of level it with that top parallel surface. And tighten it up just like that. But we'll go ahead and loosen it up. All right, and we'll go to the back side and you can get that piece in there too. All right, just snug it up and that should work pretty good. Let me see where I'm at on our squareness against the, the vise here. Pretty close right there. It looks like we're gonna have to come down with the, with the, uh, the jacks just a bit, but we'll go ahead and work on that now and start getting that squared up. And you know what I just did there? Look at this. <laughs> I captured my uh, I captured my strap, so I got to move that strap clamp out of the way. Let's get our crane out of the way. Of course, I did not think about this, but that's all right. We should be. I'm gonna go ahead and just snug the vise up a little bit, and that should hold it in place. Now we can get it out of there.
All right, we've got a rinse there. I've got another tool that we can use right there to adjust our jack. I've got the backside machinist jack down so that we can just use one to adjust it. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and check our machinist square here. We definitely need to go down a little bit. Dang, did I already put it that tight? It would help if you go the right way. We need to go down, so screw it in. I'm thinking the opposite there. <laughs> All right, snug that. Looks like we need to go a little bit more. It's looking pretty good. It's definitely contacted more in this middle area. So it looks like it's, it's um, evened out pretty well top and bottom with whatever clearance is behind the blade there. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna snug that for now and I'm gonna keep rechecking this here just to be sure. That way I can, I can get this camera out of my way and I will, um, I'll make sure that we have this squared up nicely. All right, this is looking really nice. You can see just a little bit at the top there but it's in the middle well. And we come over here and it's the same thing. Got a little gap at the top, but it's contact in the middle there. So I think we're, I think we're gonna be good to go where this is at. Let's make sure our vise is tight. <clears throat> and now we'll go ahead and bring that machinist jack up so that it's just touching bit of tension on it just like that and then this one should be yeah that one's nice and tight there okay square still looks good on the back just like we had it I think this guy is set up nice square and we should be ready to machine it now. So the plan is to, we'll use a face mill and go ahead and face mill all this. We'll find the center of it using the base right there. And we'll probably go ahead and since we're set up nice and square there, we'll go ahead and put our two holes there. And then once this is done, that'll be all for this op right there. We'll go ahead and once we do this, We'll rotate it up 90 degrees, probably put it on like an angle plate, and then we'll start machining this part of the jaws there. To find the rough center, I've got my center point in there, and we're just gonna use a, uh, a simple tape measure there since <clears throat> this is kind of domed, and you got a big hook there on the end. And we'll get, it, we'll get it close with our pointer and our tape measure here, and then we'll use an indicator to uh, get it a little bit closer than that, okay? So that is right at 10 inches. Line it up on the five mark, that should be about halfway, and then we'll, we'll just go same thing this, this direction here, uh, five inches. Got to be able to hold that in, use, uh, use the handle here. That's pretty close. All right, that should be close enough we can get in here and, uh, and sweep this outside casting. We're just gonna reference um, the outside and average it out to the middle of this base. All right, after a little bit of adjustments, we got a really good indicator set up now. So this is the uh, Starrett number 196 back plunge indicator. And I'm almost using the full kit here that comes, in, comes with this indicator for setting this up. We have a rod coming out of the collet a snug, another rod coming out, and then we're using our ID attachment right there on the indicator so that we can transfer, transfer the contact here up to the indicator. And we're just using this as a reference to get this thing in the middle, okay? So we got a rough casting, so it's gonna bounce around quite a bit, but what we wanna do is average it. So I haven't begun moving or anything, but we had it pretty close. So let's just call that 70 on the indicator. And then I will come around to this side I'll have to move around with it as we uh, continue to indicate it's on 20. So we got about 50 thousandths out right there. And then once we get this center to center here, we'll just keep moving it around 
and you know we can't come here, but as long as we're about averaged all the way around this circle here, then you should be about in the middle of the casting. So we'll go ahead and start moving it just a little bit. So low, yeah, low on that side. So we're gonna push it that way. Let's just start with about 20 and we'll rotate it a little bit and you can see it's still moving towards that 20 mark. So let's go another 10. Drops off over on that side. So we're just gonna pick a few points that we're gonna try to average it out. Come back around to the front side there and that's on 90. So we'll watch that. 90, 10, 20, and back to zero. So we're really not too far, but we need to adjust it this way right there. So we need to come this direction. Got to get off those little high spots there. Let's try zero as our reference position there. So that's that's about five. And it bounces high and low right there. I'm just going to call the zero as the, the middle of it. That's where it was uh, ground, by the way. So actually, I'm going to have to indicate it right about there and right about there to get a good accurate reading. 90, and it drops off there as well. So you can see it's a little tedious, but it's an easy way to get something like this trued up. All right, that's the, that's the plan of attack right there. I don't want to bore you with the, the same old thing because it's going to take me a couple more minutes to get this guy centered up. But I did want to show you uh, how you can sweep a part like this in. And we're limited on our uh, travel there as well. We can still go down with the knee a little bit further but this was going to be one of the easiest setups that I have in the shop to get this uh, indicated in. I'm happy with where we're at, starting from this point, working all the way around. That needle bounces back and forth about 10 thousandths of an inch, but what I'm doing is I'm working off 180 degrees. So right in that uh, general area there, it's anywhere from 85 to 90 thousandths on the dial. And then so if we go across here to that side, you can see that we're bouncing between the 85 and 90 mark there. And then I do the same thing over here because we're going to be looking at sort of this. This spot seems to be a little bit lower than the rest of it. So I wanted to just kind of make it the same. So you can see we're between 85 and 90 on the dial there. And when I come around here to about this point, it lines up with 85 to 90. But as I go closer all the way here to the edge, it drops off to 80 thousandths there. So and then the same thing, we're, we're indicating about 90 on the dial there. Back here across from that, it's between 85 and 90. There it jumps up a little bit higher, but I'm happy with that because we have it uh, nicely averaged in the center of the casting there. So I am going to go ahead and hit zero, zero on our readout, and that is gonna be our center point for the base of the casting. Okay, let's get started with some milling here. I have got a three inch Walter face mill here that we'll use. Hopefully this will give us some good performance machining our cast. And it is domed in the center there, so that's going to be our high spot. We'll touch that and uh, go down about 50 thousandths, and we'll make our pass, and then we'll probably make a second pass across there, clean it up. Uh, the overall dimension of the thickness of the base here is one inch, and we have about an eighth of an inch there that we need to remove off of this end. So it'll be cutting heavier in the middle there, but once we get it all cleaned up, we'll just do an overall average measurement on it, 
and then make a second pass there. I'm just going to go ahead and move the cutter down. And then uh, turn it on and let's just touch off the middle and then move it back. Quite a bit to come off, so after touching that, I, I brought the knee up 62 thousandths or 1 16th. See how that does. Another 16th depth of cut. That 16th pass seemed to do pretty good. I think it was right on the cusp of wanting to try to chatter a little bit. So we're just gonna stick with that depth there since we're taking such a wide cut right here. This is gonna be a three inch wide. So we'll take it on up until we touch here or a 16th. All right, three inch wide pass and 16th deep. Let's see how we do. That's what I was uh, talking about there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try adjusting the speed at first to see if that makes a difference and we'll slow down the feed a little bit. Just... A little bit too much for the mill to handle, I think. Tell you what we're gonna do, instead of making that three inch wide cut, let's go ahead and move it on out and we'll make our passes because uh, those were gonna be about two and a half inch per pass. So let's see if we can uh, handle that a little bit better.
Just a lot, a lot of cut for these types of milling machines on a big wide cutter like that. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the outside, just offsetting it four inches total from the center. And let's see if we can start making our passes. Speed that back up on our feed. I think that's uh, going pretty well. Hopefully we can make another pass and get this finished up right here. I'm not in, I'm not in any hurry to get this finished up. Just enjoying my, enjoying my time working on a personal project, getting to run the machines and cut some metal. That's doing pretty good there. Yep. Let's get some basic uh, measurements there, just to see about how, how much material we still got. I'm just gonna use some calipers for this. That's about 150, just over 150 there. Remember, it's not perfectly flat on the bottom there. Let's see what we got over here on this side. About 162 right there. So somewhere around 150 thousandths is what we're gonna be taking off.
I just wanted to show you that uh, last pass we made there at 40 thousandths. It feels nice. The mill did a good job. Face mill did a good job. I'll give you a little measurement right here with the caliper so you can see we're just over, just over one inch there. No, no big deal, but we're right about where we need to be. Happy with that. We'll move on to our drilled holes now. So our, our face milling is completed. Everything looks good. We're gonna move on to our three holes. We have two holes that are drilled for a 5 8 a clearance hole. In the center, we drill and tap it for 5 8 11. So these two holes that drilled out there are for our lockdown bolts. This is what goes through there. It's gonna be going through like that. So it's just a, it's just a clearance hole. These are 5 8 diameter there. And all I'm really wanting to do is just, I'm in the very center, all set in, Y, and I'm just using this 3 h rod to verify visually that we're in the center of this boss right there. And I've already checked it. It looks like we're good to go. That should be in the center. So we should be ready to go ahead and, uh, and drill these guys. We'll just get them spotted in first using a 3 h diameter spotting drill. And from the center line, our two drilled holes are four inches off of center. Before I spot it, I'm just going to Verify that once again using my print there. Four inches off the of center each way. Four inches. Four inches. Okay. I'm gonna use a 3 8 drill to go ahead and put a pilot down each, each three of these locations and then we'll move on to our finished drill size. start with our center drilled hole first. This hole is going to be drilled tap size for 5 8 11 which is 17 30 second. Verifying that I got the right drill and looks like I got to go down again. Yep. And change the collet out. Forty-one sixty-four. So that's going to be our clearance holes in the for the uh, lockdown bolts there. 
That'll give us about 15 thousandths over a 5 eighths diameter, but the, the threads are a little undersized, so that should give us plenty of clearance. So I had to back up here. I did try to power tap this and I had a video of uh, starting that. The collet is not holding the, uh, the shank of the tap correctly. So we're just gonna hand tap this. And what I was pointing out was that I am gonna use a little bit of the anchor lube on the tap here. And what I have found over the years is that when you're tapping cast iron, it can sometimes want to gall and kind of tear the threads on you. And I started using anchor lube when I was tapping cast and ductile iron, and it seemed to help prove and eliminate those problems. So give it a try if you haven't, because it does work good on cast. Typically cast iron and ductile is machine dry unless maybe it's in a CNC machine where you're using flood coolant, but otherwise it's typically dry because of the graphite content in the, in the iron there. But there's nothing wrong with using some of this anchor lube for some uh, tapping on cast iron there. Let's see if it'll line up with that first little thread. I think it will. There it goes. All right. Only need to go about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half, maybe. So our tap hole looks pretty good. I don't see any galling or tearing of the thread there anywhere inside. So I think we've got us a good hole. Like I said, that, that anchor lube works really good for cast iron and ductile tapping needs. This is the part that screws in to the bottom of the vise there. This goes up through the bottom of the swivel base and then it spins here on this journal and it just locks it in right there. It kind of works kind of like a shoulder bolt. So this is a part that Jason provided with me. I'm sure this, these are the ones that uh, come on the uh, imported hardtail vise. And it looks to me like they, they cast this, and I don't know if they turn it, but it's definitely a ground finish right there, and then they uh, turn the threads on it. This is a part that I'd like to actually remake myself to, uh, I don't know, A-bomb standards. 
So we'll remake this later on, but we got us a, uh, a good hole there. And that is going to complete the base or the bottom of our uh, main body right there. With the exception, I need to just do a little bit of deburr on the edge. It's still got a sharp edge from the face mill. So we need to deburr that. But other than that, this part, this part of the operation here is going to be done. We'll just use a file here, just do a little bit of draw filing around this corner just to knock off that sharp edge. This is a proper filing method, by the way. I was having some flashbacks to when we were building the tool head on the shaper and I was showing draw filing how to read the comments on that one. Okay guys, I think this is gonna wrap up our first op for the hardtail vice build there. Real happy with the way everything turned out. So we're gonna go ahead and move on from here to our second op. And what we're gonna do, let me go ahead and we got our drawing right here. We can uh, look at and discuss what we're gonna be doing in our next video there. So the backside of the housing here for the main body, this needs to be machined. And then we have some holes to drill and tap in there. And you can see those guys on the print right here. And that's going to be for the housing that actually bolts to the back of the vise here. That housing holds the nut for the screw. And it also protects it, keeps it clean and everything there as well. So this has got to be machined, this face. And then the housing that goes on there, that's got to be machined and uh, drilled as well. So this is going to be the next, uh, the next setup. And what we'll most likely do is go ahead and get this part machined. And then I also want to work on uh, this area there too for the uh, for the vice jaw. So we need to get that milled, drilled and tapped there as well. So we'll try to get this and this in our next video. And then as far as the inside goes, as I had mentioned uh, in the beginning of the video, this is going to be machined on the shaper. So once we get everything else done, we'll set it up on the shaper so that we can work on that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the uh, first video here of our Fireball Tools Hardtail Vice Build. And this is going to be a fun project. I'm really excited about this and looking forward to sharing the content with you, okay? We will see you on the next video.